Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from our sponsor. The Daily Compliance News for May 16, 2022, the Mysterious Circumstances Edition. And we begin with that story as Conspiracy Tom begins uh, or returns. As the New York Times report, reports, Val Brokschmidt, who blew the whistle on Deutsche Bank, mysteriously dies. Uh, Bro- Broke Schmidt. Uh, was a wayward whistleblower who stole or purloined his deceased stepfather's passwords to to reveal Deutsche Bank's role in money laundering, other dealings with Russia, and the Trump Organization. He died mysteriously, according to the New York Times, last month in Los Angeles. He was only 46. Uh, his father died, and her stepfather died, and when uh, he was rooting through some stuff, he found his father's passwords. He logged in and found his father's files, which detailed the numerous um, illegal actions of Deutsche Bank. And that really brings us to our next story, which is also from the New York Times, that Treasury Department warns foreign banks against helping evade Russian sanctions. Of course, they didn't specifically call out Deutsche Bank, but you have to wonder uh, what the Department of Treasury's view of Deutsche Bank and other European banks who have consistently evaded sanctions and continue to do business with Deutsche Bank going forward. But they have made clear that uh, foreign banks should not help uh, Russia evade sanctions, warning that firms risk losing access to American markets if they support Uh, Russian business or oligarchs that are facing financing restrictions. The admonition (coughs) highlights the pressure U.S. is putting on foreign banks and others uh, to fall in line with sanctions. Uh, Next up from the Wall Street Journal, a very troubling article that uh, many minority workers tired of microaggressions or workplace slights say they prefer to uh, work remotely, and they give the example of an African-American female who wore her hair in a bun, and a colleague complimented her on, her, on it as opposed to uh, the way it normally looked, which, of course, was not in a bun. Uh, she took that as a, an aggressive, <coughs> a microaggression towards her afro. So uh, even when you think you're complimenting someone, it turns out that that can be a microaggression, and indeed, that microaggression can lead that employee to feeling so uncomfortable that they uh, don't want to come back to the office. So very uh, interesting in what that will do for the upward mobility of minority workers who don't return to the office, of course, is up in the air. And our final story <coughs> comes to us from the Washington Post, and it's about email. And many employees are done with pings. Uh, notifications, and other instant messaging, and want to return to emails. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.